Hello, my name is Dylan Kikal, and I am a teacher in the Peel District School Board, and we have been uh, given the, uh, uh, the, the word that we are going to be teaching at home for the next little while. Now, I have the advantage that I have been using D2L as a software, D2L Brightspace, for some time, but I know that there's probably a lot of my colleagues out there that are probably a little bit uh, hesitant to uh, just jump right into it because they haven't been using it up until this point and but are going to have to adjust very quickly online and are probably going to be making those decisions right now so I figured uh, because I'm trying to figure out how to deliver my content online right now anyway I figured I would learn by doing and just give a quick dirty tutorial of uh, using uh, and showing my fellow colleagues how to use D2L in just like a bare bones fashion right now because if you just want to keep using Google Classroom that's fine you can do that or uh, it, but the advantage that D2L has is that it has a lot of prefab lessons that are available online I'll show you where they are uh, it has better communication tools it has access to turn it in and it has access to a full markbook tools but the thing is is that because it is so complex people tend to find it rather forbidding and for that reason I am going to just quickly go over how uh, to uh, how to set up D2L in a bare bones functional manner in, so that you could start theoretically teaching next week. Because really you need to just have uh, a functional system and then you can learn all that other stuff later. And in fact, if you want real tutorials, I'll show you where those are uh, that are put out by Brightspace and uh, D2L. But this is going to be just my attempt to uh, to show people how to get themselves set up this week on D2L. Okay, so to begin, this is the standard student portal that uh, we all have that we use to access our uh, online resources. D2L is this little orange chiclet here at the bottom. Now, the advantage that D2L has is, is that it is fed in directly by SIS. So all of your students already have access to it and have already been added to each of your classes. Uh, and all of that information is taken care of at the SIS level. So uh, I'm gonna quickly just go over some resources that are available immediately from the home page here uh, and just quickly introduce you to the toolbar at the top of the page here. First of all, there's the Learn at Home stuff. This has been, I think, added recently, but this is all of the, this just leads you to all of the information that they've already sent to us about online resources that the board has been uh, putting out there regarding Learn at Home activities. You guys can go over that on your own, uh, uh, but, uh, but that's there. Uh, also, the Discover and OERB tools, these are uh, means by which you can find prefab lesson plans that have specifically been created by the Peel District School Board for online teaching. So if there's any of your stuff that is just not going to work in an online learning capacity and you need to find some replacements for stuff that you've traditionally done, there's a lot of resources that are available in the OERB and, uh, and that you can look. There's stuff for grades 4 through 12 and, uh, and you can browse by different uh, courses and curricula. Uh, so all of that stuff is available on uh, the site. Another thing that I do want to quickly point out to you is if this tutorial, these tutorials that I'm putting out are not sufficient and you want to like do a more deep dive, Brightspace puts out professional tutorials and those are accessible right here uh, that will go into and will go at this stuff in more length. Now, uh, when using the, the home page, which you can access by going to this little uh, home icon at the top of the screen at any time while you're in here, uh, you can use that to access all of your courses. I would point out though that you don't have to go there. You can actually use this nine button thing that will show you uh, all of your available courses immediately and it will keep the ones that you've pinned up at the top so that you can go you can switch between your classes without having to go back to the main home page. Now uh, one of the things that you'll immediately uh, realize is that all of your courses are potentially played out here and you'll notice that I have like 45 of them here so it this thing doesn't always distinguish between what are your current courses and what are all the courses you've ever taught. So you may want to use the pinning feature, which is these little 
pins here, which you can do by going through these little three dot uh, menu buttons and either pin or unpin your courses. That's how you make sure that the ones that you're currently teaching right now are always at the top of your list so that you can uh, don't have the headache of having to scroll through and find them all the time. The really cool thing about the home page is that it gives you uh, uh, information on uh, what assignments have come in and what discussion threads have been posted to and you can actually just click on those directly and go to what students have done since the last time you logged in and what you've looked at and what you haven't looked at so that can be potentially very useful one thing that I do want to point out before uh, before I end the first video is that very often the uh, one of the problems that teachers have encountered and have needed my help with is that uh, occasionally their courses will be here but not active, meaning that they can access it but for whatever reason their students can't. Uh, so I don't know what causes that but some teachers have been screwed up by it so I just want to quickly point out that if that is you then you have to go to your course offering information, which is under the, the little <clears throat> three dot button there. Uh, and if you scroll down, you can uh, make your course active or inactive using this little checkbox here. And that is a problem if you uh, discover that your course, for whatever reason, uh, your students can't access it. That's one of the problems that I've had people encounter in the past. So, so that should be enough for an episode one. I have plans to make an episode on the toolbar, an episode on assignments, an episode on how to set up your homepage, and so on and so forth. Discussion forums, uh, rubrics, markbook. But uh, the important thing that we need to do as educators right now is recognize that what we are doing is distance learning, but it is also trauma learning that these kids are dealing with a lot right now there are some of them that uh, are uh, are in very uncharted territory and it is important that we keep their uh, state of mind and their health their health is our primary concern that we are very high on the hierarchy of needs for these students and uh, our first priority is going to be to make sure that they are going to get through this okay and after that we're going to do what we can to try and uh, set people up to learn as, uh, as much as we can manage by the end of the school year. So if this worked for you, then maybe I'll see you at the next episode. Have a good day.